of uh, Eight, Team Ribot. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Wow. Oh, oh. oh big hit there. Two bots, not afraid to go weapon to weapon. Malice is now stuck up on the corner, and uh, Silk very helpfully helped it down. Malice has that huge wide drum. It seems like Silk is, is finding the low ground here in this match. You can see the uh, the so Malice is on its head, and uh, the the weapon, uh, sorry, the the armor on the right hand side of that robot is peeled away. Yeah. Yeah, and similarly, the armor on the right-hand side of uh, Malice is also peeling off. Just flopping there in the wind. Wow. Oh, boy. Silk doing a great job keeping uh, Malice stuck in that corner, basically bouncing the melt off of Bert the Brit. Ooh, nice big hit. big hit there. About halfway through this match, both of these bots looking much worse for the wear. Malice just dragging along its armor. I think both of these robots are on their head, Kyle. Yeah. The big difference being that Silk, no problem being on its head. It is uh, hitting straight into the middle of that, that uh, egg beater drum on Malice. Malice is finally back on the right side. They flipped Silk over two or three times since then. We're now into the last moving. minute of this fight. Yeah, everything seemed to stop on Silk there for a second. We got a little twitch there. Are they able to move? That would be quite the upset, in my opinion, on this one if they, if they got Silk counted out. Silk is moving a little bit. Oh, wow, awesome. There we go. Here we go. Yeah, just had to peel something loose there. Look at the wheels on Silk just shredded there on that left side of the bot. 45 oh, seconds man. left. Both bots very tired. Yeah, this is a rough fight. You can see just trying to get as much signal as you can. That's what they're doing over there. Last 30 seconds of this particular match. Weapon just fired up on Silk. Doesn't sound like they're getting it up to full speed, but they are able to fire it up and move around a little bit. Oh, that looks like it might have ended just then. Six, five, four, three, two, one. This one will go to the judges. Everybody, please drive to the door. Turn your weapon motors off. While the judges uh, deliberate, we'll... So if you're just joining now, we're going to reiterate some of the basics of NHRL tournament. Uh, you know, what's, what, what are the rules? What are the criteria? You know, what, what's happening here? All right. Uh, today we're fighting in three weight classes. We've got the beetle weights in the small boxes and uh, 12 pounds and 30 pounds in the large box. Uh, now, we're running actually three different competition, three different tournaments here, tournament brackets. Uh, each weight class has its own bracket. Now, you need to lose twice to be fully eliminated from, from the, uh, the bracket. So you get kicked down into the loser's bracket, and if you lose uh, one more time in the loser's bracket, you are going home. Um, yeah, so uh, fights run for three minutes, and uh, you either knock out your opponent, uh, you force them to tap out, or it goes to the judges, and uh, the judges declare you the winner. Um, and uh, yeah, we're running big house spots as well. That's another big question that we get around the house spots. Um, Brett, Bert, and Fluffy, and uh, they unstick robots that get stuck. So uh, there you go. All right, uh, we're going to get a good shot of the control room. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. here's hey. ourselves a round of applause. Here's some of the heroes that are, are not often seen. You can see them. But hit, we keep them all safely behind glass when you walk into the building. Yeah. 
Uh, but these are the folks that, uh, you know, they're, they're there in the kitchen. They're the ones whipping up the souffle. So thank you, guys. Yeah. If you're here in the audience today, uh, you know, on your way out, be sure to peek inside of the control room through the glass and uh, check it out. And uh, here are our pit areas. And uh, these are all of the teams that have still remained alive in the bracket so far today. They have all fought twice, maybe three times, and uh, they are working diligently to get their robots back together and Over in fighting shape. All right. Oh, we got a good shot here of Ed. It's the Ed Cam and our uh, our tool shop. Um, and uh, this is where you go if you have a problem with your robot, and Ed will help you out. We can cut all sorts of things here. We have a welding station. We've got a Tormach machine, the whole thing. And um, the Ed Cam is very popular. Uh, we have a shot of Lindsay running the live chat. <laughs> Lindsay, I, I see that we have a couple of super chats. Have you seen those? Yes, uh, I have them ready for you. Um, so the first one is from our friend Ian, who's over in the UK. You, uh, Luke, may know him as Lane. Okay, uh, Kyle started that. <laughs> it wasn't me. I know how to read. Lane. Okay. But uh, yeah, since the international travel to the US is now allowed and will hopefully continue in the future, uh, do you expect more UK entries for NHRL in 2022? Great question, Lane. Love it. Yeah, uh, yeah bring, all right, bring uh, them on over. I, 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 I'm part of a secret Facebook group, Kyle. Secret Facebook group. Of British builders. Yeah, British ones. Who are conspiring together to come across the pond and compete here. And just uh, bring a whole bunch of like wedge-shaped flipper bots? No, they have like amazing robots like over there. <laughs> they do. Needleweights are like huge, huge yep. in the UK. Yeah. And I think, I mean like we have so many British viewers who watch the live stream. They watch this and they think, you know what? I want to try. I want to see if I can win a golden dumpster, maybe even a golden brett. That would be cool. Cool. All right. On over to uh, the 30-pound box. Where the fights are the best. Man, Lane, back, we'll Lane really asked other, a good uh, question. Yeah, we'll get back to that other super chat in just a bit. But here we are. We're loaded up in the 30-pound box. Run Ham seven, and Biohazard six, ready to go. Five, five seconds. Four. Let's hear some three, noise. Two, Woo! One. Fight. This is not Project fight. Liftoff Squared. <laughs> Kyle, the amount of shade in your voice. It's palpable. Oh. All right. Wow, you can see the sawdust just running away from Plyohazard. Oh, I feel unsafe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, look at that. It's leaving a trail where it goes. Yeah, just like its little oh brother. Oh my goodness. Project Liftoff. Oh, I have goosebumps. I have never seen a Melchi Brain run from another bot before. This is interesting, but they're trying to get up to full speed so they can actually do some damage. That front plate on Rumham is actually quite dense. Wow, All look right. at that undercutter go to work. Luke Quintal with Rumham has successfully pushed Plyohazard into the corner. This is exactly what you want to do with this weird square-shaped Melchi Brain. What you have to do is you have to stay on top of Plyohazard and make sure that uh, you don't give him space to spin up. A spinning Melty Brain is a dangerous Melty Brain, Kyle. Absolutely. Words to live by. Now, just to be clear, that is not real plywood on Plyohazard. That is a contact paper decal. Plyohazard getting back up to full speed here. Oh, look at the dust flying around the box. Wow. Rumham doing a great job using that side of its wedge to, or the side of its front plate to keep Plyohazard off balance. If you can keep Plyohazard wobbling, they cannot steer themselves. Look at all that damage being done to the floor and the dust that Plyohazard is kicking oh up. Goodness. If they stay in one place too long, they're just going to drill straight down through yeah. that furniture-grade plywood into the floor. If they keep yeah. going, they're just going to end up on King of Bots. <laughs> <laughs> King of Bots is a Chinese robot fighting competition for those of us at home that don't uh, follow every little nuance of the sport. 
We're down to the last 30 seconds of this match. Rumham upside down. Biohazard up against the rail. Our box is suffering, Kyle. Wow. Oddly enough, they have left the uh, the sponsorship Ooh. decals alone pretty well, so we still know who sponsored these fights. Right, oh, that's, that's great. A first. Yeah, it's nice. I would not want to run forks in this box for the rest of the day, that's for sure. No. no. Six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the match. Turn I off cannot your weapon. wait to see what wow. the judges have to say about this one. Wow. And they are going to have to do a lot of work in that arena. How are you guys doing? Uh, yes. We've, we've been better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is hard. This is hard. Yeah, so let's see. Let's let's take a look at it. Uh, damage. Who would you say uh, dealt the most damage? Not damage to the, the floor, by the way. Damage to the other I was robot. Just say, are we counting damage to the arena? Does that count? <laughs> that, if that was the case, then Plyohazard would win every single time. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I personally I would have to give that to Rumham, but that's a hard one to say. Where was the damage, though? They were Their undercutter got under them three times. Yeah, but did they do any functional damage? Did they cut into the, uh, the body? The drive damaged towards the end of the fight, so... Yeah, that was, that was the big thing, was Rumham lost half of their drive. Yeah. Oh, wow. Silk. Oh, here we go. All right, unanimous judge's decision for Rumham. By a nose. 2.5 in there for you, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 